Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email us tmasso at the 1916company.com. It is in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for this or any of our watches. Email tmasso at the 1916company.com for purchase and pricing details. Today, we're discussing a model launched in 2022 from Parmigiani Fleurier. This is the Tom de PF Skeleton Rose Gold Graphite, and the name pretty much describes the watch, but God is in the details. This is an ultra thin watch at 40 millimeters in diameter in rose gold only 8.8 millimeters thick. If we measure lug to lug, then it's 45.6 millimeters, but the more realistic measurement's going to be the rigid expanse across the wrist. So this is the incompressible distance. I can't pull the bracelet down any further. So the true distance as I measure it across the wrist is 51.1 millimeters. So the timepiece, although a 40, I'm gonna say it wears more like a 41 or a 42. It has that quality of many integrated bracelet watches in that it wears about a size or two larger than its rated diameter. That said, it does have a nice curvature to the lugs, so the ergonomic form of those teardrop Tonda lugs mitigates some of the fit issues on my smallish wrist. Normally, I wouldn't be thinking of a sports watch or a sports style watch in the 41 or 42 range as a good fit for me, but this one really is. You can see it fits easily underneath the cuff, and I'm gonna say because of the shape of these lugs, remember, there's the diameter case, the lug to lug, and then there's the shape of the lugs. And because of the shape of these lugs, I believe you could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 15 centimeters circumference. The bracelet is beautiful and it features a nice integration with the lugs and the lugs are handsomely stepped out from the case. We have polished outer facets. You can see both polish and satin for contrast. There's a distinct taper. The profiles are satin finished. We have removable links fixed in place using screws and that on both sides. We have a double folding clasp, which is a sequential close, one side before the other. A combination of satin finish, media blast, and polish with twin trigger release for security against accidental opening. Taking a quick look at the case band, you can see that again, those lugs are stepped out and they have handsome polished facets on small surfaces that are difficult to get to and polish, especially adjacent to these satin finished surfaces. You will appreciate the fact that these lugs are old school. Taking a close look right there, welded into place and then hand filed to create that super sharp break between lug and case. This is a very manual and laborious way to make a case and it's the best way to make a case. Also a combination of coining and polishing on the bezel. We have a screw down crown, the watch is 100 meters water resistant. And then we have a dial, which is both the movement itself and then also a dial. Outboard, you can see faceted, rose gold, cantilevered, applique, hour indices. We have delta style hands at center, a sort of hybrid version of alpha and dauphine with skeletonization, just like the watch. Taking a close look, you can see that there are a few choice details here including a few sharp inward creases where bevels meet and sharp cleft points, which I love to see. We also have a profusion of clear sapphires rather than synthetic rubies. You can see right here on the shock protection for the balance staff to give it a monotone aesthetic. In addition to the mirrored anglage on the edge of every skeletonized border, we have satination across the top and black polished screws. Truly impressive stuff, well done, and a viable rival to the Royal Oak Open worked. On the back, we have an automatic winding caliber that is the company's own. We have this caliber PF777, 60 hour power reserve, full balance bridge, free sprung balance, 4 hertz beat rate, it does have a stop seconds function, even though there is no seconds. It has a hacking function, I guess you could say. So you can stop the balance, but there is no running seconds hand, and you'll appreciate from the dial side that that's probably a relic of the underlying mechanism rather than an intended feature on a two-hand skeleton watch. All this pivots on 29 joules, and due to the full balance bridge with a free sprung architecture, it is quite sturdy and shock tolerant. You could see the Vauche star on the base plate just below my finger there, as this is a Vauche movement. Vauche manufacturer is the movement arm of Parmigiani Fleurier. And then you could see the rotor is beautifully done, rounded and black polished, skeletonized with a media blast and satination around its edge, and a sunburst over the bearing at center.
you can see that it is a ceramic bearing winder for greater efficiency with a 22 carat mass. So not 21, not 18 carat, and not rose gold plated, but the real deal. And all of this five position adjusted, which is a redoubtable high horology standard of adjustment for a watch. Take a look at that interior crease bevel right under my finger on the dial side. This watch is simply a vitrine for a work of art on your wrist. If you love it, reach out to Team Also at the1916company.com for purchase and pricing details.